Hey folks, what you're looking at here is Lighthouse Place Premium Outlets. We're on the back side of it. But that's not important for what we're going to talk about here. When you think of the assembly line, you usually think of Detroit, Michigan and Henry Ford. But in reality, it started right here. That's right. The assembly line started right here by John H. Barker. He's the one who developed the assembly line practices even before Henry Ford. His company, Haskell & Barker, built freight cars right on this site by the thousands. As you can see, the railroad line still exists. We're looking west toward Chicago. And this was a great place to build freight cars being that Chicago was a hub of freight during that particular time. Now, as a result of building all these freight cars, Mr. Barker made quite a fortune. And now we're going to go visit his mansion. As you can see, we're in front of the Barker mansion. Look at that gated door leading to an entryway. And once inside, a beautiful, very heavy wooden door. But before we go in and visit the mansion itself, let's head downstairs and find out a little bit about how the Barkers made their fortune. The story of the Haskell and Barker Car Company begins with the senior John Barker. He arrived in Michigan City in 1836 and began a general merchandising business, shipping goods on the harbor. By 1853, several railroads went through Michigan City, and the senior John Barker saw an opportunity. Two years later, he joined the freight car company founded by Mason C. Sherman, Frederick Haskell, and Hiram Aldridge. The company produced wooden freight cars and even received federal contracts to build freight cars for the Union Army during the Civil War. Now, the freight car company was a family business, and John Barker's son, John H. Barker, joined the firm in 1889 as general manager. By 1883, John H. would become president of the incorporated Haskell and Barker Car Company. This would begin the era of incredible growth for the company and technological advancement for the rail car industry. Now here in the downstairs of the mansion is a new permanent exhibit, the Haskell and Barker Car Company and the legacy of freight. Now the display takes viewers through Michigan City from the 1830s to the 1900s. It serves as a tribute to the freight car factory and workers through visual displays. A highlight is a scale model of the factory designed and created by students from Purdue University Northwest's engineering department. By 1908, the Haskell and Barker Car Company was the most complete factory to build freight cars in the United States, employing more men than any manufacturing establishment in Indiana. The plant covered more than 100 acres, with 3,500 men on payroll. It was the state's largest employer and largest factory complex. And it was here the assembly line was invented. That's right, John H. Barker developed assembly line production practices there before Henry Ford. And along with that, many technological advancements would begin here, greatly influencing the freight industry. And here we have a large photo of men working in the factory. And the foundry. 
Iron workers making wheels. Assembling the boxcars. The woodworking shop. And finally, the paint shop. And here are some of the actual tools they use. Timber tongs for carrying heavy railroad ties and other timber. Spirit level for determining if a surface is perfectly horizontal or vertical. Clamps for holding and securing objects tightly together. And hand planes for flattening, smoothing, or shaping wooden board. A shoulder brace drill for boring holes. Workers would lean their shoulder against the curved platform of the drill to apply force. A screw jack for lifting heavy objects. And a brace drill for boring holes. Wheel brace drill for boring holes. Drive gear creates a much higher turning speed, which is better for drilling metal, also known as an egg beater drill. And finally, a monkey wrench for gripping, tightening, and loosening things like nuts and bolts. And in this display, we see the anatomy of a boxcar. and some models of their final product. Now don't forget, next time on What's Up With Richard, we go upstairs and we visit a beautiful, well-maintained mansion. Until next time, 